This video is for Digital Society students who are in the International Baccalaureate program and they're about to uh, sit their exams. And today's video is all about how to prepare for those exams with a focus on context. Now in Digital Society, there are three C's that, you, that you're supposed to cover during this two year course, concepts, context, and contents. So today is about context. Now, I would probably put this high on the priority list. I would probably put um, content lowest. This would be second. So the uh, concepts, I think I'd be putting them at the highest priority. So if you're short of time, focus on concepts, focus on context second, and focus on content third. That's my advice. Okay, so I've just added a new blog post, IB to this website, ibdigitalsociety.com, and it's about what we're talking about, how to prepare for the context. Uh, now, in case you're wondering what the dickens this is, this is one of my, I was asking my students, what can I provide for you to help you uh, prepare for the exams? And one of my students said, you could pray for us. And then I said, well, maybe I could create a prayer for all digital society students. So that's what this one is. So you can say this before you walk into the exam hall. Anyway, back to what today's focus is. So context. So um, with this, there are basically, so I've just listed the main categories of context. So we've got cultural, economic, environmental, health, human knowledge, political, and social. So you're supposed to have covered those in your two year course. Uh, now, I've got two approaches for studying. So one is a kind of a big picture view. So if you're that way inclined and for visual thinkers, uh, I've got that's approach number one, the big picture approach. And then approach two is somebody who is maybe more, they like text, they like reading things. So it's more of a keyword approach. So two different approaches, you choose which one you like best. Uh, now, I'll start with the big picture approach. So first of all, you need the big picture is you need to just understand what cultural is all about what economic just get to know these kind of these seven different topics and what they're all about that's the starting point but also what the digital technology involved in all of this so when you consider environment so environmental is 4.3 what does that actually mean uh, and then what digital technology is involved the third part of it is actually looking at some real life examples of that technology. So I'll walk you through. So first of all, so let's start with, we'll start with cultural 4.1. What do you understand cultural to be? I would put that in the center. This is a mind map approach. Put that in the center. Now you could get a bit of an understanding what cultural is all about. If you go to, uh, here we've got con, context. I'll open that one up. So by reading through this section, it talks a bit about, okay, arts and entertainment. So what kind of digital technology involved in arts and entertainment? You've got music, uh, got the videos as well, streaming platforms, these kind of things, visual arts. Um, so it's talk about techniques as well. So that's like the creation of digital art, uh, different forms of digital art, um, the ways to experience art. Okay, so thinking of visual art, you can go on to online galleries, things like that, or, or some streaming platforms to watch videos. Um, so this is what you're thinking, it's like what, what, what is cultural all about? So it even involves home, leisure and tourism, home appliances as well. It also covers heritage, customs and celebrations, and even subcultures. So by reading through this, you'll get a bit of an understanding of what cultural is all about. So then go to a mind mapping tool. Vintage. Let's try that one. So you can, you can do the actual writing if you like, you map out your own uh, mind map, or you can use one of these free mind mapping tools. Here we go, let's, uh, let's sign up. Okay, so I've just signed up for Vintage. I'm gonna use, yeah, template. That'll do me nicely. I'll create it a mind map using this. So in the center of my mind map, I'm gonna put some kind of a, so that the, what we're talking about is, uh, I'll go back to 4.1 cultural. 4.1 cultural. 
Now, I've got blue and I've got green branches. Now, the blue ones, so first of all, I would also insert my own working definition of what cultural is all about. So, uh, so I would rewrite this. So I'm going to use uh, perplexity to try and help me come up with a definition of what cultural is. Okay. Okay, that's not bad, but I'm going to rewrite it. So, okay, so to start with, I've just named this document 4.1 Digital Society Culture. And here's my cultural explanation. So once you've got your different explanation, now we're starting to look at the different branches and think about the technology involved in such. So I'll just go back to here. So the next thing is I'd be listing some, any kind of tech, digital technology that you know and also involves some research that could be involved in the different branches of, uh, of, that, of that specific context. But then the next part is talking about connecting it to some real world examples. So I'll focus in on, so the first one is arts leisure. Now what Dick, I'm gonna copy and paste that one and stick it in here. And I'm gonna list the technology. So the technology in arts, I'm gonna think about video streaming, Netflix, Netflix, um, YouTube. So online art, oh, there we go. Look at this, I've just done a quick search and I've got Etsy, I know about Etsy, I know about Redbubble, I know about Artsy and I know about Amazon. So I'd be doing Etsy, uh, Amazon, Amazon, people selling their art. So I think you get the idea, just list all the different dick, uh, digital technology that's associated with art. Once you've done that, I would be finding another branch, I'm gonna add another branch, a green one, and this is gonna be real world example. Now, we're looking at some kind of a digital society kind of a story uh, or something in the news, which is about art and digital technology. So even if I just do a easy Google search, so I'm just gonna do a simple search, digital art. I'm gonna click there, then I'm gonna click the news button. And now loads of different stories come up uh, about art. So NFTs, I didn't think of that. So this is me now connecting the context, art and culture, or art specifically art, which is under the culture uh, umbrella. And looking at some new real life stories. Now, this is interesting, what happened to NFTs? So here's a little story about NFTs, and this could be my real life story. Now here is one about Volkswagen. I, I, know, I know Volkswagen. Okay, now here's an interesting story. Singapore Art Museum opens a new gallery with show on deep fakes and personal identity in the AI age. Okay, faces of blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm skim reading this. This all looks very interesting. So what I could do, this could be my real life example, the Singapore Digital uh, art, art Show about deep fakes. That could be my real life story. So here's how you're preparing. So first of all, think about the overall um, topic so this is arts, entertainment, popular culture. Think about the digital technology involved and think about some real life examples, real world stories that, that is to do with that. So I would fill up a whole big mind map full of the digital technology and um, stories. And then you've got a beautiful study resource, resource for the future. So you can print that out and even put it on your bedroom wall. So you're thinking about that. And then I'd create another one, which will be about economics. And then you're going to have seven different mind maps that you can have up on your on the wall where you study. It talks about the digital technology involved and real world examples. So that's the big picture approach. Now there's another approach I'd like to talk about, which is the keyword approach. Now, 
this is people who, um, yeah, so, so with the keyword approach, basically focus on a context and explore all the key terms. I've actually listed all the key terms here. So if you, the first one here is popular culture and pop culture and popular culture, what's the difference? Uh, first of all, try and come up with an answer from the top of your head and then look up the answer to see if there's a match or if there's not, if, you, if your definition is not a match to the actual definition, there's a gap in your understanding, so rewrite your own definition. The next one is digital art genres. So what's your understanding, first of all? Then look it up, use AI tools, use any research or even use the Digital Society textbook here to look at the actual definition and what it's involved and see if it's a match with your own understanding. So you can just go through all of these keywords and, and seeing if you understand what they are. And then the next step is basically to find some real world examples of streaming platform. But not just listing examples, you also want to look at a bit deeper. It's like, what are some of the dilemmas and issues with streaming platforms? What about internet celebrities? Some examples, but not just listing examples, because the uh, exam questions aren't going to say just list some examples. They want you, you're, you need to have a bit more of a knowledge of these as well. So, what are some issues or concerns about internet uh, celebrities or influencers? Some good things and some bad things. Something controversial, um, but also with a focus on the digital technology involved. So, there's a nice big long list of here of all these different keywords. So if you take the keyword approach, this is actually going to take a lot longer. One of the dangers is that you start looking at keywords and coming up with definitions, and it's just like superficial knowledge. We need to take that next step and connect it to some real world examples and issues surrounding these things. So that's another approach. So whichever approach works best for you. I personally am a bit more of a visual learner, so I'd probably be going, and a big picture thinker, so I'd probably be approaching it uh, the big picture uh, technique. Now, one other thing just in closing is when you start doing this, uh, whichever approach you take, don't do context in isolation. So you start with the small, like if you're doing the keyword approach or the, or the uh, big picture approach, start with the definitions and understanding of the digital technology, look for real world examples. But then the next challenge is, is can you connect that with a uh, concept so can you actually make connections with the other two C's? That when you start connecting it with the other two C's, you're, it, it's now starting to demonstrate you actually have a good in-depth knowledge of the three C's. Now that's, the, that's what you're aiming to do. And you could even expand your, say if you're doing the mind map approach, to include the other two C's as well within it. So that's what the direction you're going. That's what you're aiming for, to make that connection with the three C's and real life examples and some of the issues and dilemmas associated with it. But as I mentioned, this is probably the second priority. The first priority, the highest priority is to understand the concepts. And I'm gonna do another video shortly about how to study for concepts. Good luck in your exams.